Okay, so in the last video, we talked about how you can create a column where the values that you enter into the column are predetermined and that you choose them from a list and that there's two ways of going about populating that list. One is to manually put the list. Two, you can create a table and link one field from one table to a field in another table. And that's what we're going to look at here. And the reason why we're going to do this, one, because it's an important function, but two, it really leads into a discussion of data integrity, uh, redundancy, and that in this case, redundancy is a bad thing. Good redundancy is to have uh, backups of databases and have them in different locations and things like that. What's a bad thing to do is when you have redundant information within a table, because if you update one of those, um, say it's employee name, wherever you have employee name, if you have that actually typed out in three different locations, when you make a change to one, you have to make sure you cascade that change to the others. So there's a huge data integrity issue if you have the same data entered multiple times. But if you have just one table that stores that data and then you link out to the other table if you update the values in that table everything that links to it will now have adjusted values so that's kind of a lot to say so let me show you how that works unfortunately we're going to have a couple minutes of kind of a mind-numbing data entry because i have to create a second table so we have something to link to okay so we're going to click on create table we're going to go to a design view it's going to want a name let's call this sellers and we'll again get rid of the primary key we will change this to seller name and again not just name if you have a table called sellers and you have a field called name it makes sense. As soon as you take it out of the context of that table, suddenly name becomes ambiguous. So you're going to hear me mention that a few times. So seller name, obviously we don't want an auto number. We want short text. Uh, seller underscore. And again, avoid spaces. You un use underscores. So seller address. L1. Now, that might seem a little odd. Why address L1, as in line 1, as opposed to street address? Because maybe the seller doesn't use a street address. Maybe they use a P.O. box. Seller underscore address underscore line, uh, line 2. Seller underscore city. If I could actually type in seller underscore state. Now, even this isn't quite right because seller name, you might be better off doing seller first name, seller last name because it's much easier to concatenate and that is to take two values and combine them together than to split apart to uh, to use a delimiter to split them apart so generally you'd rather concatenate but we can always get to that later so seller name address line one address line two and something's not right here i'm missing an r i could see it wasn't lined up and it should be okay so that's our table. So when we try to close it, it says, do you want to save changes? Yes. Okay, so now let's go ahead and open up that table. So we'll double click on it. And now keep in mind, this is data sheet view. So you're not making changes here. You're going to enter data here. So, so first initial, last name, We'll say in this case, there's no address line two. And 
And I'm not choosing different addresses because that's really not the point. The point is just to create a table that you then want to link one field from. Okay, so that should do it. So this is a small table, so it probably doesn't seem very meaningful. But again, the idea is that this table would be your table that stores who you are currently actively buying from. And since that's very vital information and can change, you obviously don't want this information stored in multiple locations You within a single database. You want one single master table and then anywhere that needs that name will link to this table. So let's go ahead and close this. So what happens is once someone is creating an entry here, okay, when you bought it, okay, if you want to say track who you bought it from, so what we're going to do is we're going to modify this table again. So view, design, And we can say seller underscore name. Now, in a larger organization, you probably would have a separate transactional database. In other words, you would have a, a transactional table. So you'd have a table that just says this was bought by so, uh, by so and so for a certain amount of money. Okay, so you'd have a separate transactional t uh, uh, table. What we've done here is we've kind of taken the transactions and combined it with the table that says what we have. And we're just making a notation that says it was bought from so-and-so. So in a larger organization, you'd want a separate transactional table. That's okay for our purposes. This is fine. Okay, so this gets to what we wanted. So seller name. As I said, you don't want people meanly entering names here. Well, I mean, they're going to meanly select, but you don't want a static list. You want this list to update based on the other table, the seller's table. So what you do is you click on the drop down arrow. And again, we go to the lookup wizard. And this time we don't choose. I want to type the values I want. We leave it here. I want the lookup field to get the values from another table. So next. We want to choose it from sellers. Next, what do we want? We want the seller name. Next, and there's only one field. Next, and again, when you see this, you want to make sure it's wide enough to fit the names. Next, and we'll leave it as that, and we'll do finish. The table must be saved before relationships can be created. Save now, yes. Now, watch what happens. For books underscore games table, this is the one that we're in, we'll go back to data sheet view. So rather than closing it and reopen it, you can just navigate data sheet view. Okay, so here's the new uh, field. So say we're going to, we, we just bought something else. And we possess it. It cost, say, 30. It's now worth 90. It is, say, a book. And now we click on this drop down and see you have all these names. So without having to, well, we had to create the table instead of the manual list. But now when that table changes, this will change. Again, it probably seems like overkill because it's only one location. But if you extrapolate out and think, okay, maybe I have six or seven different 
uh, tables that have to refer to the seller, then, yeah, I, I don't want to keep type of that information. I want to be able to have it link right to that master table. So one table linking to another seems like overkill, but I think you get the idea where if you have, again, if you have multiple tables all needing data that's from a single table, you don't want redundant data floating around that all needs to be updated. You want them all to link out to that single source. And in another video, we can look about how to go uh, populate fields. You can either manually change these since it's such a small amount, or maybe uh, we'll look at another way of doing that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we will close that. So a couple more things I want to examine before we conclude this video. So go ahead and open up books and games or books underscore games. Change the view to design view. And over here you see the property sheet. Property sheet is for the table as a whole. And you can see there's various properties here. I'm not going to go through them now. This in itself is really uh, quite extensive as far as what you can do over here. I want to really point out this field properties because right now we're really talking about the data that's being entered, like the source of the data and things like that. So rather than properties of the database as a whole, I want to look at the field properties. So these field properties are specific to each and every field. So if I make changes to this one and then change a field, it'll be set to uh, whatever the default values are for that field. So for collectible, if you look down here, required and it says no so in other words you could actually create a new record and not put any of this data in because no is the default value for everything we're going to change that to yes that this field is required which kind of makes sense they all really should be required so maybe cost and sell you might not know maybe you're just kind of uh, prospecting and you don't know but this should at least be a collectible name because that's really the major thing that you're tracking track you're tracking what this object is and the other stuff is basically a subset of that so required yes and by the way field sides this is what I was talking about earlier that uh, short text is only 255 characters so let's go ahead and change to data sheet view and you'll see that it will give us a warning you must first save the table, yes. But now we get this separate warning about data integrity. And again, a lot of what we've been talking about is data integrity and uh, the very nature of a database is to try to protect that. So they're saying, look, you changed a rule, this might cause a problem. So we're gonna say, yes, we wanna continue with the existing data. So this field is now required. So watch what happens. So I'm gonna create a new record. Uh, we'll say that it's possessed and it cost us $20 and it has a cell of 50 and it is a, see, it already warned me. You must enter a value in the books, games, collectible field. It did not let me go any further. Same thing, clicking on these it would not let me go any further. So it's stopping you. It's like, you have to do this first. So we can put something in here. And now we can make a selection. So just like that, you've made a field be required. So let's look at one more property and then I think that will conclude this video. So go back up to view, go back down to design view and let's add a new field, okay? We'll call it purchase date. And again, you don't wanna use the word date because that's a protected word. And also, again, when you remove it from the context of the table, date suddenly doesn't mean anything. Is it a birth date? Is it a hiring date? Is it a termination date? What is it? So purchase date, data type will be date time. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to default value. So for default value, what we want is we want the date in which this is being created. So it's going to default to that date. Now, that doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't force you to use that date. You can still edit it. But in this case, it is basically making a suggestion. It, by the default value, something will appear there rather than blank. So how do we do that? It is the word date with parentheses after it. And go ahead, click on View. You must first save the table, yes. And see, it is showing today's date here. Now, this is not a complete row. This is just pre-populating a few things for you. But this is not actually a saved row. So if you were to export this, you would not see this. But this is showing you that if you create a new row, that will be there. So it now defaults to a purchase date of today's date. And that's a particularly useful command to know is uh, the date command because now you know how to get today's date. So I think that should be about it for this video. There's a few more properties down there. We'll probably get in the, to them in later videos. But this one, I just really wanted to show you how to link tables and then how to tweak some of the properties as far as making something required or having something pre-populate for you. And this is just one of the many things you could pre-populate. So you could pre-populate today's date, but maybe there's something else you want to pre-populate. So, all right, that should do it for now.